I don't like nostalgia or I, it, I'm not comfortable with it, should I say. Um, I don't like looking back at the past. Some people love it. Um, some people thrive on it. I can't. I can't do it. I've got to be here, present, yeah. in the present moment. And that's how my brain works. What is it that us artists have in common? Well, we're here to find out. This is Red and Yellow Make Ginger. <laughs> Okay, so welcome to another episode of Red and Yellow Mate Ginger. So I'm here with Maria Valance. Yeah, so welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. It's really nice to be here, Chris. So thank you for inviting me. Yeah, no worries, because we connected over the stories through the circular art space. And I don't yeah. know if we knew each other before then, but that's certainly how you came onto my radar. And we taught a fellow neurodivergent and... Yeah, they, absolutely. That's how, we, that's how the messages started. So maybe to start us off, maybe because you said you've gone back to art recently. And absolutely, yeah. Went. Oh, now there's a there's a there's a story. Um, yeah, I literally just started in October last year. So October 2022, I thought. I actually want to do this properly. It had been a 25 year gap. Um, I think I'd convinced myself that I just wasn't very good and there was really no point in trying. But then with the joys of social media and um, talking to other artists, um, one in particular is a, a friend of mine up north who has a clothing brand and he was never really much of an artist, or so he thought. But I was really impressed with the way he not only drew every single day without fail, did even if it was just a doodle on a bit of scrap paper, and shared his story about his mental health. And he really inspired me. I said, I'm just so impressed with your dedication to your, the fact that you draw every day and you just you're just so dedicated to it, no matter how you're feeling, because his mental health is quite challenging. Mm -hmm. But he carried on regardless. And I was so inspired by that. And I thought, well, if he can do it, then maybe I could too. Yeah, because you started the 100 days recently and you're on day 29 now, aren't you? Oh, my goodness me. I, do you know what? I think, yeah, because you and I bonded over um, neurodivergence and ADHD particularly. Yeah sticking to something for that length of time yeah. is quite an achievement <laughs> i've never managed it i think i got to maybe two weeks i think oh so. that's still impressive <laughs> yeah. that's still impressive and i and um i hadn't heard of it before i i literally found out about it the day before the launch and apparently this has been going on for quite some time and um there's about two million people who have taken part in it <laughs> previously and now and i thought well i kind of missed something here so i got nagged by a couple of um neurodivergent friends international uh ones in portugal ones in the states and they said well why aren't you doing it i thought i said i have no idea why i'm not doing it we'll do it then they said <laughs> oh, well uh, i don't want to argue with these two because they're quite feisty <laughs> so i started doing it and uh, yeah um with their support it's kept me going and they've said I've kept them going too and I think that helps because otherwise on your own it's it's a bit hard to keep that motivation going yeah but... I think it's good to have community and like um not sort of held ransom but it just keeps you going having that support uh, with other people who are going through the same thing or doing the same challenge or whatever it may be it, it's really opened up my world um not only doing art again but being open about my so-called defects 
gone through my entire life pretending to live in this neurotypical world where I'm okay and, and I am capable and I can do this when actually, no, it's been a bloody struggle and I've had to do this all on my own. And all of a sudden in the last few months, I've met all these wonderful people, including you. Yeah, we really need to for that. Yeah. yeah, there's this wonderful community out there, even if it is international. I think you're the nearest person to me. Yeah, because um, oh, yeah, yeah. an hour. <laughs> yeah. That don't matter. <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> well, there's somebody <laughs> near me. I don't have to get on a plane to go and chat with them. <laughs> you know. No, exactly. But, and I, I, think, yeah. I think what's interesting is we say... We, we struggle we what well, we do we do struggle but it's finding out what our strengths are and what we what we can do and and the way we do them and it's gonna be different to the neurotypical world but we just have to figure out how to uh, put a strategy in place so we can do the thing yeah and, absolutely and not do it in the way that people expect us to <laughs> yeah exactly and i think one of the other things i've got is dyspraxia and apparently I've been told that we are very good at lateral thinking, kind of thinking outside the box. So. Yeah. yeah, and inventing new ways of doing things, which are actually maybe even, dare I say, a bit better than the uh, neurotypical ways. That's a bit cheeky to say, isn't it? But um, I'm going to say it. That's better for us, certainly. <laughs> better for us, definitely. <laughs> and it works for us. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, um, it's been mind blowing meeting so many fantastic people and people who have really struggled, at, but have carried on. And, and like you and I were saying, I think in previous chats about how much we've worked on ourselves mm -hmm. and that determination for personal development and getting ourselves stronger and, and coping in a way that where we can thrive. Yeah. And then as when you people, do get that as well as artists. Yeah. Yeah. When you do get that diagnosis, you're like, oh, all the self development I've done to try and get over this thing I have no name for, I, there's a reason for it. Yeah, because yeah, you live your whole life, unless you're lucky enough to get a, a diagnosis when you're young and you have, um, you know, a very supportive network around you. You do sort of go through life knowing there's something not right with you, something's different. That's that. I wouldn't say it's not right. I would say it's different. You're different. Yeah, exactly. And why Why am I different? Why don't I do what other people do? And why do I think in different ways? And and having yeah, yeah, yeah. having an answer, or several answers in my case, is <laughs> yeah. like, oh, all right, okay, yeah, got it. Yeah, and thinking out, why, why can't I do that thing much quicker than other people? But why is that? other thing that they can do instantly take me forever yeah it's just oh absolutely i i remember this um this is at primary school i was about seven and we all got given this piece of paper and you were meant to glue it together and make a pyramid and i couldn't for the life of me do it i just could not do it I'm mine looked like I <laughs> yeah i was just like all these kids around me look i'd gone psh, 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 psh. Mm. All right, here's my pyramid, miss. Uh, how do they do that? I d and I just sat there thinking, is the teacher going to shout at me because I have failed? No, she actually felt sorry for me. She went, oh, Maria, did, did you sit on it? <laughs> oh, no. That remind, no. That literally reminds me of um, my design technology. Um, we had to create like a maze for like a marble and everyone else oh. is all measured with wood and stuff my, mine was like a death trap with all these things stuck off it and <laughs> and um hitting it with a hammer because it wouldn't stick properly and just making it work <laughs> oh i'm so with you there it probably would have ended up looking like a weapon and a <laughs> yeah it looked, like, it looked like something you could throw at someone it was not <laughs> throw at the wall yeah, yeah. Knit a broken ninja star or something it did look a bit yeah. like that with um yeah, <laughs> nails that i put like tape over so it was safer and it was yeah it, was, it's, it wasn't really my subject really <laughs> oh i completely empathize with that do you know what? nowadays that would make a good art installation wouldn't it yeah I, yeah, I've got a canvas <laughs> that is broken and because I, I pressed too hard and now I'm thinking that'll go in, in the show at some point <laughs> just to show you the oh, absolutely. Of art. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so so back to the hundred 
100 days you you're putting it with words aren't you so yeah how, where the words come from and how do you think of those that, so I think that would take me a, lo a long time it's that is a very good question actually um and this is going to be one I'm going to find hard. Some come easily, like um, today's one. Today's one is nostalgia. Yeah, it's just sort of uh, Yeah, mm. and I was trying really hard to not make it into a spiral. I love spirals, but I, for some reason, I didn't want to draw one. I just wanted to draw a kind of like a vortex, I suppose. Yeah. And the word came to me easily because um, my friend and I yesterday, we went on this epic walk and she was talking about nostalgia and I don't like nostalgia or I, it, I'm not comfortable with it, should I say. Um, I don't like looking back at the past. Some people love it. Um, some people thrive on it. I can't. I can't do it. I've got to be here, present, yeah. in the present moment. And that's how my brain works. And so she and I are having this debate. And then it, it just so happened that this drawing reminded me of an album cover from my teenage years. Okay. <laughs> um, it was a New Model Army album. Um yeah, and I remember excitedly getting it from the library when I was about 16. <laughs> and I thought, well, ironically, that is nostalgia, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So in a way, I kind of contradicted myself there. But at the same time, I'm interested in how these things work themselves out, how the brain just processes all this stuff and how it comes out on social media in its finished form and yeah it's very strange sometimes I I do have to make up a word yeah sometimes it's how I'm feeling that that particular moment um sometimes I just get inspiration from nowhere um there is one drawing actually I did it looks like um, it looks a bit like a Viking ship, and I said it looked like some kind of freaky Viking space cartoon or something. And then about an hour later, my mum comes into the house. She says, "Oh, the neighbours have just given me this book. It's called Valhalla Rising, <laughs> and it's got a picture <clears throat> of a black Viking ship, which looked like the drawing I had just drew." Okay, so I wonder if that was in your mum's house and you've seen it, or whether it just Sarah different difficulty and I, yeah, I think break of consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but it's, it's funny in... how that happens. Yeah, and I think was it you who posted the other day? It was a video on your stories, and it was Jack White. No, um... I don't think that that wasn't me. I, I do like the white stripes, but that wasn't. Oh well, he the someone had posted up. I think um... they did. Can't remember <laughs> an interview with him, and he was saying about when oh, he writes, I might be. writes, yeah. writes a song. He works as he, yeah, he feels he's like God's antenna. I'm actually starting to think there might be some truth in that. That somehow, as artists, something is being channeled from the ether somewhere. Yeah, because you're not, you're not always in control. You are sometimes, but. <laughs> no. sometimes, but... The, the the book Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, who did the um, Eat Pray Love series. Oh yes, I've got that. I haven't read it yet. Oh, it's it's brilliant, and she talks about the creative consciousness, collective consciousness, and how she had an idea for a book, couldn't do it, left it for a while. Yeah. And someone else had the same, pretty much the same idea, and she was going, but that's not a genre, people. That's not that's not a thing. How would that happen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so she was inspired by something from somewhere that wasn't that wasn't tangible. Yeah, and then someone else had the same idea from some other source. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting. And like I don't know if you get this with your art, but people come to me and say, Oh, I really like this. This reminds me of something that happened to me or um something that they really love, like an animal, yeah. a favourite animal and or another painting or yeah. Yeah, another painting. And um even though I don't see it, I'm really pleased that they can see it they get joy out of it whatever they see i, I just go yeah you're right because they, they ask me what what it actually is and i go well it's meant to be this but you, you'll say you're right anyway because you're the one seeing it it's yeah just, exactly you know. and i think like with what jack white said in that interview as well he said like once he's written and recorded these songs 
they're kind of no longer his. They're out there in the world yeah, exactly. for people to own in their own way. And and that's something I have learned to do because I, I don't like the idea of getting very precious about a work, um, whether it be a big painting or a drawing. I mean, it gets easier, but the longer they're on my walls for, and you know, the longer I can see yeah. them. I mean, I mean, the ones where the paint hasn't even dried yet and they're already going off somewhere um, and they've got to wait for it to dry, that, they're easy enough to let go of. But when I've yeah. had it for a year or two years or more, then it's like, and then someone finally sort of yes. gets, gets in front of it and likes it and buys it, then it's difficult. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, you can get attached to some of them, yeah. can't you? And that and that gets hard. But I, um, I do know artists who get very, very precious and they really don't want to let go of their work. And, and I'm saying, but part of our, dare I say this, a part of our purpose in our creativity is to share it with people. Mm-hmm. And to hopefully inspire people too. Hmm. Um, you know, you, I mean, you don't have to share your art to be an artist, but it's a shame if you don't, I think. I think so too. And um, when I started this, I kind of thought, well, it's a bit like throwing something at the wall and seeing if it sticks. If yeah. it sticks, <laughs> great. If it doesn't, I'm going to do it anyway. And I've been really pleasantly surprised with the encouragement feedback from other people and other artists and I've made some great friends in this short space of time Hmm. and um, I've even joined accidentally it feels accidental uh, joined uh, an art collective Um, we're all scattered around the UK it's highly unlikely that we'll ever meet well, some of them maybe but, yeah. but um we are all together encouraging each other and and that's nice yeah there's um, a great community on social media that is social and it is a group of people who do want to support you but it can just take a little while to find them sometimes yeah i i really wasn't expecting to connect with so many people on this level and it's been lovely it's also been completely mind blowing uh, to the point where I kind of just want to run around in a circle screaming, but in but with joy. I can understand. Than... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that response. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that. Yeah, those things we're not really allowed to do in public. You kind of want to do that indoors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a few moments like that. Where, yeah, you, sort of, how, how, you know, it's not. Um, socially understood, but that's what you'd have, that's what you would do if it was. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I actually used to be a support worker in, in Bristol um, for people with quite moderate to severe learning difficulties, and there oh, was one. I, chap- I, did I, I did that for a little while as well. So. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. It's re- it's really rewarding, and I got quite attached to this chap with Down syndrome who loved tea he loved tea as much as I did and I absolutely hated telling him that he wasn't allowed to have a cup of tea for at least another hour or whatever because that was the rules yeah so much and he (laughs) oh he would do this thing where he'd lift his t-shirt and start screaming and running around the room and I thought you know what mate I really envy you because you can do that you can do that and get away with it <laughs> you can express how you're that. really feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if we did it, we'd probably get arrested. <laughs> or, at least someone come up to us and ask if we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope they would be more compassionate and yeah. ask if they, if we were all right. But yeah, I was just like, yeah, good on you, mate. I don't blame you for wanting to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's like- yeah, I mean, it is a very rewarding job. It's also a very ch- challenging job as well. And yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but yeah, you, I, I like what you say, though, about, yeah, they can express themselves in the way they want to express themselves in that moment. And I guess to a point we can, but we have these little filters and these things we stop ourselves. And because yeah, sometimes, yeah. sometimes you want to, I think that's why I like art so much, is I can really just let loose and just. Yeah, just yeah. and that's what I like about your art, Chris, actually, is that there is such a sense of freedom about it. Yeah, because we were it... talking about that on the prequel, and I yeah, it's very interesting, because 
as soon as you learn more, you have that like danger of tightening up and being you know losing that freedom and so i'm on this tightrope all the time of just trying to be free and loose but also learn more and improve it's a it's a very deli- delicate balance it is a bit of a tightrope sometimes isn't it but at the same time i think sometimes we have to fall off it yes <laughs> as crazy as that might sound you can but, um... try things out and yeah because um how was it when you were going back to the art and getting back into the tactile nature of it? And because I, I had four years off when after university, oh, yeah. and I remember it took a little while for the rust to come off. I think I got through at yes. least ten paintings before I go. Okay, I'm starting to get it now. Yeah, yeah, I'm still in that stage to a large extent, which is why yeah. I think this hundred day yeah, project has has been really good for me. And I've also been trying to. This is the 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 autistic side of my brain trying to look for patterns oh. and uh seeing if i can see any and there there does seem to be a sort of um a bit of an edvard monk van gogh thing going on in some of the lines yeah i love both of those artists and I think, yeah me yeah. me too and they were both ridiculed mercilessly when they were yeah. alive and i really feel for them you know mm. in a posthumous way but um when it comes to painting, especially for like a gallery, you know, like including circular art space, I still think, oh, not good enough. Um, is this me? Would you recognise it as a Maria Valance painting? Because they're all different. <laughs> well, they are. <laughs> you know? but they, they do have. Yeah. They do have your signature feel of them, and all that will happen is that will evolve. You find new techniques and ways of doing the same thing but in a new way. <laughs> I hope so. I mean, yeah. that's that's what I was saying about my friend earlier. You know, he would practice every single day. And over time, I could see him developing a style and an identity. And I envied that. Hmm. I think you've got that now, but what will happen is you'll just evolve as you... As you, as you, do you learn think? Back. Yeah, because looking think back... I do? Well, I mean, looking back at my old stuff, it's it's similar. I did I did faces, I did abstract stuff, I did figures, but I'm just adding a lot more texture in, a lot more layers, and a lot more like an understanding of the art now. Whereas before, it was pretty much the first layer was kind of what you got. So yeah, yeah. So the same thing really, but it's just you know evolved a lot. Yeah, and I, do you know, I am looking forward to that. Um, I am I'm so excited about this new phase of my life, not being afraid. To- to try this now there would have been a time I'd been too terrified to even have a go Mm -hmm. and yeah when I first started drawing again it was it was all very nice and neat and a bit tentative and afraid (laughs) and I actually got really sick of it I thought this is pathetic you know doing a nice little neat little flower you know you know neat little flowers are nice (laughs) don't get me wrong they are nice but they're not me yeah, finding out um, what your true artistic <laughs> voices takes a while, and yeah, and it's and it is. I think yes, I think maybe you're right. It is starting to come through a little bit mm. now. Um, well, in these, these hundred days, you, you know, you, you don't have time to think about it. You just got to create something that day, and therefore creating a lot. And then when you, you do get to have... hundred days, you got hundred yeah to look back on, and you can keep um, creating something because the only way. We, we find our style for me it's just creating a lot things that influence my art but things that inspired my art and um, I might take a reference I might take this or I might just draw from my head or from observation yeah. whatever it is but it all you know from through doing it will it will you know evolve and change but I can definitely see a lot of you know, they do have similarities for, throughout even though they're all different and that will just evolve as time goes on, I think. So. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see where both you and I are respectively in, say, like a year's time and mm. see how our practice has changed. Yeah, I, I find yeah, I find time helps. And normally a year, I don't really notice much, but three oh, years, really? three um, years and you, you look back and go, yeah, that's much different. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you have this experience, but with the ADHD, I tend to like hop from one thing to another thing, and then another thing, and then another thing. And I'm like, hang on a minute, will you stop jumping around and just stick with one thing, just for a little bit? <laughs> yeah. So I don't do that so much with with the art pieces. I need to finish the one art at a time. I get, you know, yeah. 
like hyper focused to a degree where everything else like my laundry my yeah, gets, <laughs> you know, oh i know um, oh um, but yeah. then when when it comes to all these other creative things i've now got like the podcast and the video and the it's very easy yeah. to to keep changing between all of those <laughs> yeah yeah so it is, it's similar, but in, in, in the different yeah. practices. Yeah, yeah I, I completely um, sympathise with the laundry thing. Yeah, because you get so I... into your creative, yeah. creative thing, right? You're just going, well, if I do the other stuff, I won't have the energy or the concentration or the focus to do this. So something's got to give. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you've really got to focus, haven't you? And then, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, and you've been connecting to a lot of other artists because I see the mental health one just uh, print just above you. And you've been connecting to a lot of. Yes, here's the one Instagram. I was talking about. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you're doing really well, well on connecting to people. And yeah, it, I, I, you know, what? I have really valued that more than the actual art sales at this point, because mm. um, I don't feel ready to sell officially. Well, but people, I am selling people unofficially. Get in touch when they, yeah, yeah but, people do DM yeah. me and ask if I can have if they can have something, and I say, yeah, of course you can, and then and then they end up on a wall. But um, yeah, yeah um, well, I can't remember where I was going with that, but um, <laughs> sorry, I, I went off a tangent. You went off a tangent. Yeah, so the yeah, the connecting to people through um, yeah, yeah, the art prints and, and art books, that and sense of community and. You know, with the when I I found it was circular art space I found you on, and it always surprises me how people connect with each other. I mean, I did not expect us to do this, for instance. I just liked your art, and I liked the fact that you were also neurodivergent and you were local. Yeah. <laughs> you know, technically local. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, yeah. great! You know, someone nearby. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll go for a sketch a sketch session at some point so yeah it'd be interesting to see what what we come up with yeah. won't it but um yeah there are other artists from that realm as well i've connected with and and it's funny i have yet to find an artist who hasn't got some sort of whether it be a mental illness um a neurodivergence or a physical um, illness or something some or something trauma or you know we've all got some sort of wound yeah, I mean, there are artists who don't, but it seems like because art is so healing and people, when they start art, may use it for their mental health or it does yeah. seem more common, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So you've met people who, who haven't had, wow, that that's, I, they're rare. I, I, I have, but I've met more people who, who have, yeah. Yeah, it's, it almost started to feel to me like it was some kind of prerequisite that you you have to be tortured in some way to, to do what we do. You know, it's been really interesting not only sharing techniques with people, um, speaking to people online like we are doing, and yeah, just sharing life experiences as well. And I think they do sometimes without realizing affect the way we draw and paint. Do you? I was going to ask you a question actually. Can, Can I do? interview you for a second? Do you? Yeah. Uh, what do you get? Um, a lot of NFT people. Oh. Yeah, kind of. There's a there's a there's a scam going around. That, that's what it is. Yeah, the, the whole. I won't do it on your I, platform, but I do it. You can do it on mine. And I'm going. Now the only one I don't do any NFTs. I've got two out there on on my link where people can, can buy them. And, yeah. And, and so you can use that if you want to. But yeah, mine is. Just oh, what, they're hilarious. I yeah. yeah I, I, sometimes I, not, I just. Yeah. I waste their time and just talk and just use that as like a like an educational learning thing for people and then screenshot it and go yeah this is where it would go so yeah yeah exactly oh good on you for um yeah. spreading awareness I mean it's got to the point now where I can sniff them out before I've even looked at their profile usually you can just say oh yeah and most people <laughs> say they're an NFT collector and I'm thinking no collector would highlight the fact that they're a collector <laughs> yeah exactly or very, or very few would so i mean occasionally oh, they catch me out where it, the wording is a little bit and i go this is probably an nft thing but i will just see whether and then, and then see the where it goes and the second yeah. message, message like yeah okay fine block <laughs> yeah yeah so <laughs> yeah, bye bye <laughs> so it's make it's making the art world really difficult because you know, cyber crime is on the up in terms of people trying and yeah whether it's successful or not i don't know but it's definitely on the up and it means 
it's a real minefield to filter through the genuine people. And yes. so I don't really, I, mean, I don't think I will be selling at all through social media. Not that I was before, but the, no. website, the website's more secure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And those who will go to your website are way more genuine, aren't they? They're, they're certainly or at genuine. Least, at least when they yeah. click on all the stuff, it's all um, encrypted and it's a bit easier than trying to send them down the PayPal route. And yeah. Exactly. Oh, it does make me laugh when these people say, oh, I'm a big fan of your work. Your stuff's really unique. Really? Then why aren't you following me and liking my stuff? Yeah, and why, that, is it, and why is this the first time I've had it? <laughs> yeah, and they all often go, it's, it's, it's a squid, it's a, a unique, and you, you know, use the yeah, same oh, word. Yeah, they all use those same words, don't they? Exquisite, yeah. unique, amazing, yeah. So it's a, it's a real, like, uh, masterclass in branding, actually. <laughs> yes. They use, yeah, they, use is, the same, they use the same colors and font, or all of them. They use the same wording, <laughs> and, and they reach if... out on a constant basis. So yeah. Do you think there's some kind of NFT scam school somewhere? Must, because they all be. use the same. <laughs> there must be like a group of them who get together every Wednesday or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. We'll try this strategy. Um, um, we'll meet back at this time next month. <laughs> Um, saving the stories i think i can make an artwork out of it out of all yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah yeah maybe we ought to make artwork out of their stupid um posts yeah and their messages yeah i haven't quite come up with an idea yet but that's what i was thinking oh oh yeah i'm sure i'm sure something <laughs> can be yeah just i do feel though for artists to are new to that sort of game and are taken in by it um, and i hope there aren't many um, but i suspect that they do try and prey on the ones who are a little bit inexperienced and or, and yeah. are really keen to get by yeah they prey on progress. our excitement and yeah yeah so i do yeah. try and educate people best i can but there's only so much you can do isn't there yeah absolutely well if you at least help one person yeah exactly yeah absolutely but yeah it's a real minefield and i uh, my, my block list is, uh, i hope there's no limit on that i'm getting i'm getting i've got at least, oh, two, no! at least 200 in there <laughs> i know i think i've lost count now yeah <laughs> yeah oh i don't know but well I, I often wonder if there's also stealing someone's identity i'm going it can't be that sweet little old lady it can't be <laughs> oh it probably is Oh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Either that or some 20 year old who's just going, All right, I am Doris today. <laughs> yeah. I'm, Doris. I'm Doris today. I love um, it. <laughs> I think it's a mighty, mighty bush who used that. I don't know why it seems like a. Yeah, it's not, really, it's not really a name we hear very often. I used, yeah, I used to love the Mighty Boosh, yeah. Yeah, I was lucky enough to go see Noel Fielding's art in uh, the end of 2019 before the whole. Yeah. So oh, I've of, got his book. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those where you're thinking, oh, it's, bit, it's just very doodly and stuff. But when you see them in person, it's different. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Because, yeah, I, I did wonder what they'd be like. Are they, are they, how, are they well, quite large well, work? Well, he he does small works like little little sketches, but his big work is like seven or eight foot high. Wow! Because they came out, I was like, oh. ah, <laughs> <laughs> blimey! Mm -hmm. yeah, Mikey, bless him, he's probably got the room. <laughs> well, this was an entire little gallery because he he connected with it, and so yeah. it's like, yeah. yeah, we've got we've got five more out the back, and Noel thought they'd fit, but we told him they wouldn't, and yeah, they didn't. <laughs> So, yeah, you, you, the owner would just be like, hang on a minute, and bring out another large one. It's like, how many have you got fitted in that little storeroom? Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, he, it, was, it was like a, that's how you run a gallery, is have that, we were there for like three hours, just had this chat with the owner, and he brought some stuff out. Um, every so often, he would have a delivery come in and go, oh, yeah, this is a new one that isn't, isn't out yet, but you can have a look. <laughs> and it's come, yeah. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, why can't they all be like that? Yeah, so that was in Deal in, in Kent, so yeah, four-hour drive to get there. But um, uh, yeah. I stayed for two nights, I think, so uh, Canterbury, and yeah, it was really good. And that's when my painting of the storm came out, because it, 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 the next day was like a complete storm and the, and the waves and things. So oh, really nice. Sat, Do you know what? Here. Actually, I can see Noel Fielding influence in your stuff now, now that you mention it. Well, didn't occur any, to me before. Yeah. Well, any yeah. artist who, who's free in their work, I go, yeah, that's how I want to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm like, that, I'm like that anyway, but it just, it just, 
reinforces what I'm already doing. So oh, totally. It's um, I'm um, I'm someone who who isn't that easily surprised or amazed, but the amount of amazing artists out there mm. is a constant surprise to me, and I hope this surprise and wonder continues because um it i it makes me feel very alive possibly for the um, for the first time in a in a very very long time yeah you made me think actually i need to start looking at other artists because I, I seem to have got my artists and stopped but there are so many more artists out there that i haven't found yet and absolutely partly, partly why i'm doing this podcast really is it gives me a legitimate reason to talk to everyone and it's yeah. Oh, it's brilliant! It's yeah. it's a it's an, a genius idea of way of talking to people and at length as well. Yeah, exactly. I normally do short form, but yeah, long form is apparently people like to listen. So, so get, going back to you, going back to your artwork though. <laughs> um, oh, sorry, I do do no, that. I start in. No, it's great because back. <laughs> we're having a we're having a normal conversation, which is good. Um, but I was, I was just wondering, where's your inspiration come from when you're creating the artwork? Like, is it from like a mood or um, an emotion or? Yeah, when when you know when I was being tentative with my little flowers and, and stuff like that, um, it it started to evolve into sort of therapy. Um, because I I have quite an intense job. I work with end of life people. Oh, wow. Um, so it's quite it's quite a heavy going job, but I love it. So palliative care is what I do. And um, you're not only taking on the care of the person who's going to pass soon, but you you take on their family mm. and the family pets because the family oh, pets yeah. see, they know oh. what's happening and, and, and you comfort them too. You know, when I get back, I've got all this stuff, this emotional baggage from other people and understandably because it's it's a big deal yeah. um and i think yeah it that it started off as that as kind of offloading any feelings mm -hmm. and emotion and it and it evolved from there it mm -hmm. started to get a little bit more dare I say sophisticated a little bit more art like and um it was I could see it evolving very slowly that's mm. a word we've been using a lot today isn't it evolving evolve yeah maybe um, that could be a, a new word <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely evolver oh there's that magazine isn't there revolver um yeah and I think that's really important we are constantly changing and evolving aren't we in mm. our creative practice so yeah that's that's the kind of, um, from my personal journey, along with my friend's inspiration to get me to do regular practice again, those two things sort of converged and it's just developed. And it's developed really quickly as well. The speed that this has happened <laughs> has been quite phenomenal. Yeah, it's amazing how that one time we, where we, I say take it seriously, but we start putting it out there and creating our art. So we're still being playful, but we're... Yeah, putting it yeah. out. Yeah, you know, different. Yeah, I mean, it's it's who we are. It's it's part it's part of our soul. Dare I say it's you know it's our essence, our life blood, if you like. Absolutely. It, we just yeah. Where yeah. would we be? What would we do? <laughs> I think we'd be very grey, you know, like a dull mm. dishcloth or something. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how most artists feel about their artwork is. If they weren't doing that, what would they do? You know, <laughs> so yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's one of those when you take time off, you're thinking, how do I take all that time off? And <laughs> yeah, you do you, look yeah. back on that and wonder how, why did you walk away from it in the first place but, when it's actually yeah. who you are. But a, a break can really help the art sometimes. You sometimes you need that kind of yeah, and get back to it. Yeah. We definitely had our reasons, and I told you mine yesterday. Um, I I. And I don't wish it on anyone. I mean, I was doing really well at art school back um, in the day. Um, <laughs> and slowly, bit by bit, my body was starting to break down. I was um, during lectures, I noticed my hearing was going. I was going deaf. I was going deaf in one ear. And I went deaf in both ears. And then I started um, losing my balance and, and my short term memory. And one day I just didn't wake up 
and it took yeah I had my body just shut down I ended up in hospital across the road from the university and once I was awake I still they couldn't really work out what was wrong Mm. and I just spent the next 10 years trying to recover and because it affected me mentally as well and so art was definitely not on the cards um it wasn't until years later they found out I, I've got lupus oh, yeah. um, and I had an extreme autoimmune reaction to stress because I wasn't eating much. I was being an artist. I was too busy drawing and painting to eat and, you know, being generally hedonistic and, and slow and my body just went, no, you're not doing it. Um, so I got that on top of the, the thing yeah. as well. But um, But I think... It taught me, as frustrating and as painful as those 10 years were, I learned a lot about myself and how to look after myself. And like you were saying, those coping strategies, uh, learning how to cope with the the, the neurodivergence that we didn't know we had, <laughs> yeah. along with that as well. And, and well, it, it does... a lot of mine got masked with not, it wasn't lupus, but it was like, it ended up being under actual thyroid that they didn't diagnose. Oh, and then yeah, got, yeah. I had physical health problems for yeah, probably over ten years actually. But um, yeah, but yeah, that got that kind of masked the mental stuff because uh, yeah, I didn't able to really have anything to really connect to that would you know that the mental health would you know come into play at that point. So um, once I got better physically then that's when the mental health started going oh there's other things too yeah. oh yeah now now you've ticked that off the list is yeah. this other stuff right <laughs> oh so you've had you've had quite a similar journey in a way well different but similar yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah same and, but different yeah, yeah yeah but yeah that sounds like a scary time and but then once you're out of it the the art helped but yeah it must have been yeah as a whole oh, new it was... podcast in itself really <laughs> yeah I'm so glad it, it it eventually did go away <laughs> and I could rebuild my life or should I say build it from scratch you know yeah. but um I think those experiences also contribute to the the way I create things um yeah, for sure and yeah um I've started blog writing and yeah I, I've I'm gonna try and chuck all that in as well <laughs> there's lots to do <laughs> yeah I started a blog but it's kind of after about a year of doing it it's kind of on a bit of a oh. break at the moment but what well, yeah you did it for a year that's brilliant yeah I'll, I'll put a link in the description because yeah, that's all about mental health and things so oh please do and i'll, 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 that... send, I'll give it to you as well to have a look but yeah yes please because uh, um well, that... yeah we'll put your blog in, in as well if you want it public and oh uh, it's not ready yet but, but when, when, I, when it it's... is <laughs> yeah i've got i've got loads of them but i just need to sort of edit them and with a bit of a timeline and then i'll give it to you of course yeah, when, it, when it when it's ready yeah yeah, yeah, totally. I'll do a blog share. Cool. Yeah, so so we we just we we could we could talk for hours, but we're just coming up to the end of this <laughs> end of this hour. So um, there's a question I ask all my guests, and that is for those putting putting their art out, out there for the first time, or those who have been doing it for a while but becoming a bit disillusioned by it, and you know, want either stopping or slowing down. Like, what advice would you give them for those being brave and putting their work out into the world? oh that's what in terms of selling or just putting it out there oh, per se more so in terms of the sort of mindset and the and having encouragement you know nothing to do with sales as such but just more like because we, we come across like barriers don't we in putting our art out there okay yeah here's some of the things that i learned that really helped me and it's a little bit of a list <laughs> it's only a tiny one though but um one do not be afraid to call yourself an artist as simple as that sounds it's it's a profound thing having that bravery taking that leap and calling yourself an artist I know really great artists who sound not an artist and I get really mad at them because they are they are artists Mm -hmm. don't be afraid it and regardless of whether or not you think you're good enough you are an artist if you're creating you are an artist and another thing that i um i learned and i i agree with this but not everybody does agree with me there's no such thing as bad art 
just the wrong audience for you. <laughs> Somebody out there will love what you do, regardless of what you do. And don't be afraid to share it. I could not even begin to imagine the, the positive experiences I've had just in these last few months with my crazy little doodles, as I used to call them. Take that leap of faith. See what happens. And if you don't like what you're producing, try something else. You will eventually find something that you love doing that you will want to keep doing and people will be inspired by you and one thing because i know we're short of time oh, oh, don't, yeah, don't don't be don't afraid worry. <laughs> okay thanks chris don't be afraid to share your story because initially i was terrified of telling people like I'm autistic, ADHD, dyspraxic, blah, 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 and mental health as well. Um, but actually, people resonate with it, and people resonate with the story behind your drawings and your paintings. They somehow illuminate your images. And That's looking great. back on my days as an art student, I'd always used to love reading those little captions in an art gallery next to the <laughs> painting. Yes. It's like, oh, the two together yeah absolutely. Up, uh, yeah so yeah um, don't be afraid to share your story yeah absolutely i mean not all art has a story but the ones that do don't be afraid to share absolutely that. it yeah. could be i did this on the toilet and that in itself is brilliant <laughs> yeah. because you can then envisage the artist doing that well there's um, not as, as, as an art idea for people <laughs> if you want to give up <laughs> you know <laughs> instead of the crossword i did a painting yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, I hope no, this great has been advice. okay, Chris. No, this has been great. This has been really great. <laughs> it's always, you know, lovely to talk to you. So, um, but before before we end this podcast, where where can people find you? You know, you're on Instagram. Is that the best place to find you? Yeah, that is the main one at the moment because, unfortunately, although my website is live, I accidentally deleted the entire content. Oh, I remember you saying. <laughs> and in january and um yeah i it will it will be back one day yeah me, me and websites it's... don't really get on so if i were to eat all of mine i don't know what i would do <laughs> yeah you've got this nice little front page with my instagram address on the bottom but that's all you've got as a website so yes um my my handle is a little bit of a strange one so it's the letter m for maria underscore zero underscore v because it it wasn't intended to be an artist account it was just like a personal account of ramblings and then it no but the mushroomed but the um so. the thumbnail <laughs> comes up and i recognize it so yeah yeah I, I, i'll put it on screen anyway so people can oh literally thanks see chris it, so no worries that's much appreciated thank you but yeah thanks for coming on to the podcast because I was just like, do you fancy coming on to the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's oh, Chris, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. It really has. Yeah. So, Thank you. So, yeah. So thanks to everyone who has been listening at home. Uh, yes. Wherever Thank you may, you. may be. <sighs> And I always say, stay creative, keep scribbling, you know, get over that perfectionism because totally. you know, we all have, have something to give. So, Oh, I completely agree. What what he said. <laughs> so it's, it's bye from me and it's bye from Maria. Bye, everyone. Thank you.